welcome to this session of craft theory. I'm Dr. Sridhariya sir, Assistant Professor IIRA Hyderabad. In this session of graph theory, we are discussing directed graphs. In earlier session also, we have discussed directed graphs and some basic results, basic, definition, basic definitions, basic results on directed graphs and all. Let, let's see what is, once again we will refresh what is a directed graph. A directed graph or simply a diagraph D consists of a finite non-empty set of set V equal to V of G of vertices together with set E equal to E of G of ordered pairs of distinct points of V. That is if we are having V equal to V1, V2, V3, V4, then our edge set will be what are distinct or ordered pairs of distinct points of V. Then it is ordered pairs V1, V2, V1, V3, then another one. V3, V4, like that. Now, we will see much more things. Today, we are going to discuss uh, this Eulerian graph. If it is, uh, if a directed graph is given, if it contains an Eulerian circuit or something like that. We will, first, we will refresh what is an Eulerian graph. A graph G is said to be Eulerian if it contains a closed thread containing every edge of G. That means we can find an R2 that travels through every edges of G. And we have also seen what is Hamiltonian graph. Graph is Hamiltonian if, it, if G contains a closed trail passing through each vertex of G exactly once. Now we will see what is a directed Eulerian. A connected diagraph D is uh, Eulerian if there exists a closed trail containing every edge of G. That is, if we are having a directed graph like this, then we can find a two from here into in every a two containing every edge of G. This is an Eulerian. Okay. Now see this graph. What is an R? We have discussed what is an underlying graph of a graph. Uh, if we are removing the uh, directions on the uh, edges, we are getting underlying graph. Here we see that one, we are getting a directed graph. Here from first, if it is V1, V2 and V3, what is this? If we are starting from V1, we can go to V2. From here, we can go to V3. Is it possible to travel through this V3 to V1? No, it is not possible. Also, we are not uh, travel. Uh, we, we cannot travel from V1 to uh, this V1, V, V3, then V3, V2, V2, V1 uh, cannot be traveled. So this directed graph is not Eulerian, not Eulerian. Though its underlying graph is Eulerian because we can find one tool from any vertex to uh, going through all the edge. Uh, we can start a tool starting from any vertex going through every edges of G. Now consider this graph. Let the vertices be named V1, V2 and V3. Okay. We are, when we are considering this um, underlying, when we are considering the underlying graph of this V1 graph, well, we can see it is an Eulerian. Why? Right? If we are starting from here, we can go through each and every edge exactly once and we can reach back the starting. But when it is when it is a directed graph, is such a tool possible? If we are starting from V1, we can go to V2. Is it possible to V2 to V3? No. Or if we are starting from V1 to V3. Then V3 to v, uh, V2 is possible, but V2 to V1 is not possible. So even though the underlying graph of a given graph is, given directed graph is Eulerian, the directed graph may not be Eulerian. This is one case. Now we have, let's refresh some of the points that we have required in this session. We know that what is out degree of a vertex is the number of edges emerging out of it. That is, if we are having vertices V1, V2, V3, V4, and we are having edges like this, V2 to V1, then if it is like this, then the out degree of a vertex is the number of uh, edges emerging out of V. So, if out degree of V1 is 2, okay? And in degree of a vertex, V is the V of directed graph is the number of edges incident or fallen into V. And in degree of V1 is 1. 
because only we can see that only one edge is falling into view. The sum of all our degrees is equal to sum of all n degrees. Sum of all our degrees in a graph is equal to sum of all n degrees. And tournament is a diagram in which two vertices are joined exactly by one edge. Now we will see other things. Now we are going to de uh, define the source and sink. Source of a diagraph D is defined as the vertex with in degree equal to 0. So suppose we are having a diagraph here, the in degree of this vertex is 0. This vertex is termed to be the source. And so there are some vertices in graph where the out degree is, do this graph, vertex has any out degree? No. Out degree equal to 0, that is called C. An important case we have to remember is that Eulerian diagrams has no sources nor scenes. Okay? okay. Uh, what, what is the condition for a uh, uh, diagraph to be Eulerian? A connected diagraph is Eulerian if and only for each vertex V of D, out degree of V is equal to in degree of V. Okay? A diagraph D is Hamiltonian if there exists a cycle that includes every side vertex of D. We have already seen the definition of Hamiltonian graph also. In any general graph, in undirected graph, a uh, mm, graph is said to be Hamiltonian. If we can find a circle that contains every vertices of that G. Here also, if we can find a, the, in, even in, a, in, in the case of the directed graph also, it is said to be Hamiltonian if there exists a cycle that includes every vertex of D. That is, if, uh, if it is like this. Here we can find a circuit passing from this vertex to and containing every vertices of the given graph and it is Hamilton. Okay. We have already seen that in Eulerian diagram, a diagram is said to be Eulerian if it does not have any source nor sense. But now we have to uh, keep in mind that attunements may have sources or sense. They are not in general Eulerian nor Hamilton. Now we will see trees. Trees with directed edges. We have discussed in general uh, undirected graph what is tree. A tree is a connected graph without any circuits. Or if tree is a connected graph with n vertices, we have n minus 1 edges. Here also, tree is a connected di digraph that has no circuit. A tree of n vertices contains n minus 1 edges. Trees with directed edges are of great importance in many applications. We will see where these applications are used in electrical network analysis, game theory, theory of languages, and computer programming. Okay? We have already seen that trees has very much importance in uh, trees. Is, trees are a important structure in graph. In directed graphs also where trees are uh, used and uh, directed trees are used mainly in this electrical network analysis and game theory and also then computer programming. Trees in diagrams have additional properties and variations than that of undirected graphs resulting from the relative directions given to the edges. We will see it. Because we have already seen a root what is a rooted tree. And now we are seeing much mother in a rooted tree with in a, in a directed graph. A rooted tree with di a directed edges are of much importance and are called arborescence and is defined as false. A graph, directed graph is arborescence if G contains no circles, neither directed nor semi-circular. In G, there is precisely one vertex V of zero in degree. We have this vertex V is called root of that at process. Because here the, it has got only out degrees and no in degrees. Hope this 
This is an example of an acquiescence. Just normal as we have learned what is a tree with rooted wetters or a rooted tree. The same thing. But here we have given the directions. And this in degree of this vertex is zero. Now we have seen some, we have some results regarding the acrosins. Acrosins is a tree in which every vertex other than the root has n degree of exactly 1. Let us see here. What is the n degree of this, uh, in degree of this vertex? It is 1. Any vertex you are taking, what is the n degree of that vertex? It is 1. Other than root, every vertex has n degree in adversaries, there is exactly a there is a directed path from root to every other vertex. Is it so? To, if I am taking this vertex, there is a directed path from root to that vertex. Conversely, um, that is, and in adversaries, there is a directed path from root to every other vertex. Conversely, a circuitless diagraph G is a presence if there is, if there is a vertex B in G such that every other vertex is accessible from this B and B is not accessible from any other vertex. Here also we can see if we are having this root, this is this vertex, from this vertex we are reach, we are able to reach any other vertex through an edge. But this vertex is not reachable from any other vertices. Okay. Now we will see what is an order tree. In computer literature, a tree in which the relative order of subtrees meeting at each vertex must be preserved is called order tree or a planar tree. In computer science, the term tree usually means ordered tree. By convention of a tree, it is hanging down from root to the top. Now we will see what is a spanning arborescence. We have already seen what is a spanning subgraph. A subgraph which contains all the vertices of a given graph. And what is we have seen what is a spanning tree. A spanning tree is a tree which contains all the vertices. Here also the spanning arborescence means it is also a arborescence which contains all the vertices of the given tree. A spanning tree in a, now let's see what's the definition. A spanning tree in an and vertex connected diagraph is analogous to the spanning tree in a directed graph consisting of n minus 1 directed edges. A spanning arborescence in a connected diagraph is a spanning tree that is an arborescence. For example, the bold arrows here, this bold arrows from V2 to V1, then to V3, V4. So there are four vertices. We have V1, V2, V3, V4. And this, this constitute a spanning adversaries. It contains all the four vertices. And it is a spanning tree. And uh, spanning adversaries means I, I, the, or we can find one vertex of in degree zero. Now we will see what are the matrices associated with diagrams. We have already seen that graph has different type of representation and matrix representation is one kind of representation of graph. Now we will see how we will be defining the, uh, we have already seen the incidence matrix associated with the graph and adjacency matrix associated with the undirected graph. Now we are going to uh, define the incidence matrix and adjacency matrices associated with directed graphs. We have already seen in a diagraph, sorry, sorry, undirected graph if it is of order n and size e, the incidence matrix is defined to be an n by e matrix with the entries equal to plus uh, 1 and 0. If aij equal to 1, if uh, j edge is incident with i vertex or equal to 0, otherwise. Like that, we have defined incidence matrix of an undirected graph. Now we are going to see what is an incidence matrix of a directed graph. The incidence matrix of a diagraph with n vertices and e edges and no self loops is an n by e matrix and x equal to xij so that 
point if j th edge is incident out of ith vertex. Minus 1 if j th edge is incident into ith vertex. We, in undirected graph, we have defined it to be 1 if j th vector, uh, j, yeah, j th edge is incident into ith, ith vertex. But in directed graph, we are we have in directed graph we have, for every vertex we have in degree and out degree. In the same way, we, here also we are using plus one if j the edge is incident out of ith vertex and minus one if j the edge is incident into ith vertex and zero if j the edge is not incident with the ith vertex. And we will see with an example how to um, define how to write the incidence matrix of a directed graph. Now we consider this directed graph, which are the vertices P1 to P6 and edges are from A to H. Now see, consider this uh, edge v, vertex V1. Here, B is incident into that V1. So, minus 1 here. A is not incident with A, B, C are not incident with this vertex V1. So, there are, we are putting 0 here and here. And what about D? D is incident into V1. So, it is minus 1. And E, it is not incident with the vertex V1. So, 0. And F is incident out of V1. So, here 1. G and H are not incident with V1. And what about B, uh, B4? Here before we can see that a uh, vertex uh, edges a and b are incident into v4, so minus one. And c is also incident into v4, so minus one. And d uh, is not incident on uh, v4, so zero. And d is also incident into v4, so it is minus one. What about that? G, uh, e, F, G, H, they are not incident with V4 and therefore zeros. So, with every vertex V1, V2, V2, V2 is, V2 has uh, the edges which are our incident into V2, F, H. So, F and H corresponding to those points, F and H, we have minus 1. And E and G are emerging out of V2. So that E and G, for that we are putting 1. Other edges are not incident on V2, so they are zeros. Okay? It's, I hope this visible to you. And we are okay with this instance matrix. Oh. And what about this V6? Only A and B are emerging out. So this A and B are emerging out means plus 1 for each corresponding to those places. But uh, remaining other edges are not incident with this V6. So, zero. Okay. Now we will see how to define an adjacency matrix of a di directed graph. Before going to the directed graph, we will see how we define adjacency matrix of an undirected graph. If G is of order n, we used to uh, we defined adjacency matrix to be an n by n matrix. And ij entry to be defined as 1 if i to vertex is adjacent to j to or equal to 0 otherwise. Now we will see how to define the adjacency matrix of a non-directed graph. And it is as n by n 0, 1 matrix whose ij and uh, ij elements are defined as aij equal to 1 if there is an edge from i to vertex to j to matrix. You see the difference here. In directed graph, we are defining if there one if i to vertex is adjacent to if there is an edge from i to vertex to j to vertex not if it is just adjacent okay or zero otherwise now consider this adjacency matrix we have this edge uh, vertices v1 v2 v3 v4 and v5 now see this V1, V1 to V1 there is no edge and V1 to V2 is there, if it was undirected graph it was, we could have put 1. But this V1 to V2 there is no edge. 
So we are putting this. And V1 to V3, there is an edge and there is one. And V1 to V4, there is an edge directed edge from V1 to V4. So we are putting one. And no edge between V1 and V5. From V2 to V1, we have one edge. So it is one here. And V2 to V2, there is one edge. So we are putting one here. And V2 to V3, there is no edge. And V2 to V5, though there is an edge in the underlying graph, it is not V2 to V5. So we are putting V2 to V5, 0. So V3, V3 to V1, no edge. V3 to V2, no edge. V3 to V4, no edge. Uh, V3 to V5, uh, V3, no edge. V3 to V5, there is, there exists one edge. That is why we are putting like that. One. And v, uh, V4, no edges are emerging out of this V4. So, everything we have zero solid. But in undirected graph, we have, there exists an edge between V4 and V1, and we will be putting this V1 here, on here, then, right? There is a difference between, while we are considering the adjacency matrix and matrices associated with directed and undirected graphs. So please remember the definition. One, if there is an edge from alt vertex to z vertex. Not if i and j are uh, adjacent. If there is an um, edge from j uh, alt vertex to j vertex. So, from vertex v5 to v2 we have an edge. V5 to V3, we have an edge. That is why we have put this one. This one and one here. With, uh, with V5, from V5 to no, no other matrices, we have no, no edge. Okay? So now we will see what, what are the inference that we are getting from uh, this uh, adjacency matrix of a directed graph. It is a symmetric matrix. We have in uh, the undirected graph, we have seen that adjacency matrix is a symmetric matrix. But in directed graph, it is a symmetric matrix if and only if G is a symmetric digraph. What is symmetric digraph? If, if there exists an edge of the form, if there exists an edge of the form uh, UV, then there must be an, another edge of the form VU. Then only we say that this digraph is symmetric. For every edge UV, there should be an edge of the form V. So the um, adjacency matrix of a directed graph is symmetric if and only the directed graph is symmetric digraph. Every zero element on the main diagonal represents a self loop on the corresponding vertex. Now parallel edges are permitted as per the definition. Here also say every non-zero element on the main diagonal. Here we have this one on the main diagonal corresponding to this U2. Here we, we got a self loop at U2. But here also for other vertices it is zero. There exists no self loop on that particular uh, vertex. That is, every non-zero element on the main diagonal represents a self loop at the corresponding vertex, and no parallel edges are permitted as per the definition of the adjacency matrix of a given and directed graph. Now we will see this paired comparison and diagonal. In many experiments, one may be required to rank number of objects by comparing only two at a time. There are many cases, especially when we are uh, where, where the number number measurement is difficult. For example, we will see the individual pro, uh, performance of piece of music. It will be different from person to person. The items are represented to uh, the, for, the, for the purpose of uh, comparing. The two items are given at a particular time. And that person has to rank according to his wish. Let's see how it is. Items are presented two at a time to a subject. Subject means to whom who it is evaluating like that. And he or she is asked to state his or her preference. After having noted all the results, if there are n objects, we can have n into n minus 1 by uh, n, n into n minus 1 by 2 pair comparisons. The experimenter ranks the n objects in, or, in the order of preferences. 
such a method where only two things are paired at a time is called method of paired comparison. That is, method of paired comparison means only two objects are ranked at a time. Okay? You will see. So, in a diagram is a natural way of representing the results of paired comparison experiment. Suppose, suppose that six food items has to be ranked. So, six food items has to be ranked means four, five, six. The experimenter will be given like this. One, two, three, four, five, six. He has to take only two items at a time. If you are taking these two items. Now, how we will say that? You can take one, one, one like this and taking other two items like this. So, we have like this we have that. So, it, it is that we are taking um, NC2 time, NC2 items like that. So, in here we are given 6 items. So, 6 e to items. 6 e to means 6 factorial by 2 factorial by five, uh, 4 factorial. So, that we can take it in 15 ways. Energy is drawn from preferred item to less preferred item. Suppose that if it, there are 3 items, 1, 2, 3, and this energy is drawn from less preferred item, energy is drawn to less preferred item. From most preferred item to less preferred item. That is, one one has got prefer, uh, priority over two. Such a graph is called preference graph. Energy is drawn from preferred item to less preferred item. That is, one is preferred and two is less preferred. If, if it is like this, and this is three is preferred and two is less preferred. And such graph is called preference graph. A gra graph with a uh, graph drawn with directed edges from preferred item to less preferred item. Such a graph is drawn as preference graph. Now we have these six items has been marked like this. To establish the rank from preference graph is not gen generally easy. For example, consider the following graph. Some more, mostly some people may have some uh, because of when human conditions are taken like that, then preference may be like that. One, one is preferred over two. And here we can see that two is preferred over four. And we expect that one should be preferred over four. But here it is marked like that four is preferred over one. So how we can take which one is the best one? Like because one is preferred over two. Yeah, one is given high rank. And two is, uh, two is preferred over four. So, uh, what should be there like that if I uh, want some, some inference has to be drawn, one should be preferred over 4. But here 4 is preferred over 1. How we can? So, it is not easy to like that. So, doing in this pair comparison, we are just taking by rank by uh, ranking by score is used to find. Because what is this ranking by score? Finding the number of out degrees. Because first one, 1 is preferred over 6, 1 is preferred over 5. And one is preferred over two, and one is preferred over three, and one is less preferred over four. So they're like that. So when comparing this uh, ranking, well, uh, out degrees means so first you have one has four out degree, and also this three vertex three has out degree four. What about this two? Two has out degree one, two. And what about this five? One, two. And about six, uh, one, two, of degree two. And what about this four? Four has our degree only one. So when we are comparing like this, we get this kind of, uh, from this figure, we get like this. That means one and three are, are tied for the first rank position. Two, uh, five, and six are tied for this. Item two, five, and six are tied for the second position. And four is a least preferred item. Okay, this is method of paired comparison.
And now we just will refresh what is a tournament. Tournament is a diagraph in which two vertices are joined exactly by one edge. It is used to represent the um, games where only one winner is selected like that. And this application of tournament to record the result of any game in which no draws are allowed, like the tennis tournament, cricket, etc. Tournament can also be considered as a case of bad comparison. Okay. Now we will see what is an acyclic digraph and decyclization. Digraph that from the name itself means acyclic means that does not contain a cycle. Digraph that has no directed circuits. Here we say that digraph that has no directed circuits is called acyclic. Observation on acyclic digraphs. Every tree is acyclic digraph, but the converse is not true. This is an acyclic digraph. How we can say that it, that it is acyclic? If it is, if you are considering this <coughs> undirected graph or underlying graph of this uh, directed graph, we say that it is cyclic. But when we are considering this directed graph, can we find any cycles out of this? Suppose I am starting from this vertex me, and I am going to this vertex, from here I am going here. Can I go to any other vertex from here, here no way, no way and no way. From here, I can I go through this outer layer? If I am going through this way, I cannot proceed to this way. Or if I am going to this, anyway, you cannot find any cycle in this uh, digraph. But is it a tree? No. We can say that uh, every tree is a cyclic digraph, but the converse is not true. Every acyclic uh, digraph is not a tree. A directed graph D is a cyclic if and only if every directed walk of D is also a directed path. Okay. Now we will see some results on a cyclic graph. Every acyclic graph digraph D has at least one vertex with zero in degree, and at least one vertex with zero out degree. Is it true? At least one vertex with zero in degree and at least one vertex with zero out degree. Is uh, can we find anything like that here? Yeah, zero uh, one vertex with zero in degree and one vertex with zero out degree. And which one we can find? Here it is uh, zero out degree. Sorry, zero in degree. And what about the zero out degree? Yeah, there it, it is with zero out degree. So, in every acyclic digraph, there is at least one vertex with zero in degree and at least one vertex with zero out degree. And now we see that what is decyclization. Acyclic uh, graphs are of enormous importance in many applications. In ranking by paired comparisons, directed circuits represent inconsistency. We have already seen that from 1, we have got priority over vertex 2, item 2, and 2 is pri prioritized over the item 4, and 4 is uh, prior prioritized over the item 1. So, we were getting inconsistency. Directed circuits are not favorable in pro project graph of CPM, critical path method, or project evaluation and review technique PER report. And because of this directed graph, directed circuits A, B, C, A. If we are with this means per means A, which implies what? A has to be completed before B, and B has to be completed before C, and C has to be completed before A, which is an impossible situation. Because first we have to complete A, then only we can, we can complete B, then only we can complete C. And what what do you say? C has A has C has to be committed before A. It is impossible situation. Similar situation in computer programming often arises and known as deadly encounter. Now we will see what is that in deductive logic. That is where, where, uh, what 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 does what does this deductive logic means? What is this represents axioms or statements and that directed edges represents theorems or derivation of one statement from others. As, uh, a directed circuit implies circular reasoning and hence fallacy. Thus, too uh, thus, it is too important to find the smallest set of directed edges whose removal will render the given diagraph a cycle. 
for example that is we have to find some set of edges whose remover is must to get a proper answer from that for example consider this figure it consists of directed edges it contains directed cycles also which are the directed cycles we can find from this figure yeah if you are starting from e1 e2 e3 it is that like that from here we are going from here to here here this on directed cycle and e4 e6 e3 e4 e6 e3 okay E4, E5, E2, E4, from here E4, E5, E2, E3. There is, um, uh, in this simple case, we can find three directed circuits in this circuit. So, and uh, we can see this E3 makes the uh, remote simple. If you remove this E3, will we get any uh, circuits out of this simple graph? If you are removing E3, then what does it mean? We can find go E2, E1 to E2. Then um, are we going to E1 again? No. E, E4, E5, E2. Not to E4 again. E4, E6. Not to E4 again. Thus, the smallest set of edges whose removal destroys all the directed circuits is known as minimum feedback arc set. That is the set that here, here this E3. The smaller set of directed edges which remove destroys all the directed circuits in the graph diagram is known as minimum feedback arc set. In electrical, uh, in where the minimum set are of you know, minimum feedback arc set in the field of we are using it in an electrical engineer. In general, a diagram may process uh, several minimum arc feedback, minimum feedback arc set. Operating on which smallest, the which is the smallest is called. Minimal decyclization of ed, uh, edge graph. Okay, here this E3 is the uh, minimum. Now we will see what is topological sorting. We are, when, whenever we are constructing some networks, it must be uh, checked for so that, uh, whether some directed circuits exist. Because why this directed circuits uh, implies inconsistency in the network, and which um, we are, we are run our new circuit, new circuit is created. We have to check for these directed circuits, and we have to correct all these things. Topological sorting is a very efficient way of finding whether or not a diagram has a directed circuit. Topological sorting means what? The vertices of a diagram D are said to be in topological uh, order if they are labeled in one, the number 1, 2, 3 to n in such a way that every edge in D leads from smaller number vertex to a larger one. Okay, that is the edge ij in D we have i is less than j. e1, e2, etc. like that. e1, e, e1 if uh, there, there is a vertex of the form. We first we are labeling the vertices. If EI is from VI to VJ, then I am um, I is less than this G. The process of labeling of vertices in such a way that are in a topological order, that is in a special order, is called topological sort. That is, if directed diagraph, uh, that is, if a di directed diagraph contains a directed circuit, it is not possible to put the uh, vertices in topological order. Because if it contains a top uh, circuit means we are going from V4, V, uh, V4, V, uh, V6, then V, uh, V3, V4. It's not in uh, topological order. Consider this figure, V4, V6, V3. Here if it is V1, uh, V2, V3, V4. This is, in a, this is not in a topological order. The following construction shows, the, uh, shows that the vertices of every acyclic graph can be put in topological order. How we can put it? Start with a vertex with 0 in degree and label it 1 and delete the vertex 1 from D. We are finding some um, uh, of the uh, all vertices. We just find the vertex with 0 in degree and um, label it 1 and just remove that vertex. And from the directed graph, from now we are removing this vertex one means 
remaining uh, digraphs with d minus 1 find the vertex with 0 in between and label it to and from there delete that vertex and repeat the process either every vertex is labeled or we find a direct sub digraph d in which there exists no vertex with 0 in degree. Okay? Every vertex, either every vertex is uh, labeled or we, found, we are getting a subgraph in which every vertex with 0 in degree. Thus, we will get, we'll be getting this topological sorting. Now, we will see the some results. Uh, uh, vertices in a digraph can be ar arranged in a topological order if and only if the digraph is set. If it is cyclic digraph, we cannot put the vertices in some topological diagraph. Ty topological order or topological sorting is not possible in a cyclic diagraph. There may be more than one topological sorting for vertices in a given a cyclic diagraph. Okay. Well, we are applying this topological sorting. Topological sorting is an important process in many problems besides the Activity network analysis. For example, if you want to arrange words in glossary so that no term is used before it was defined, we switch to a topological sorting. That is, we are defining some words and we have to um, use that, uh, the, the definition has to be used in such a way that no words, no words are used, no words in the definition are used before giving its definition. Here we are applying this process of topological sorting. Okay, in this session we have already discussed what are the topics we have discussed, Euler in diagraphs and Hamiltonian diagraphs and directed trees and we have seen what, what are the matrices associated with the directed graphs. We have uh, seen this adjacency matrix and incidence matrix and paired comparison and tournaments and cyclic diagraphs and decyclization. Uh, sorry, cyclic diagraphs and Decyclization and topological sortings and its applications. I hope you enjoyed this session. Thank you for watching. Thank you. Like, share, and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.